So here's an example of me actually doing it, getting out of a rear naked choke against a great grappler, a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, who does this for a living, who has the hooks in. So uh, I'm not just saying that you can do it, I'm actually doing it. However, if you look at that slam from where I'm standing and he's on my back, there's the difference between mixed martial arts and Krav Magas, a self-defense situation. Look, when I do something like that, it's uh, partially because it's fun, and it's got entertainment value for the crowd, and it's you know it, it looks it looks cool in, in in a fight. But I would never do that in a real life self defense situation because the worst thing that's going to happen in that very moment, if I don't succeed, right, is that I'm going to pass out, and the third person who's inside of that cage, who is the referee, is there for my safety. So if I would be if I would pass out, the referee is going to stop the fight, and now go on to live another day. In a real life self-defense situation, if I can't get rid of this choke, or if I, as I jump forward, and I can tell you it's very different to jump on cement versus a canvas inside of a cage or a ring. Um, but if I don't land correctly, I'm knocking myself out potentially. Or if I don't get into the right position where I can defend it, I'm gonna pass out. And in a self-defense situation, that renders, that renders you completely helpless and at the mercy of the attacker, uh, to do whatever they want to do, right? So that's why it's really important to understand the difference between mixed martial arts and a real life self-defense situation. But again, I'm not just telling you things that, that I hope are gonna work. These are things that I implement myself, as you can see here in the fight.